I'm quite from the gourmet plate. Yes, I'm back. Do you miss me? <laughs> so today we are having some chow kway teow, fried rice noodles, stir fried with mixture of soy sauce, chili paste, topped with delicious ingredients, forming a smoky plate of goodness. Alright, that's enough screen time for you. Run along now, go film some footage, we gotta pay the bills. Okay. What's up guys, I'm Weilun and yes, I survived despite me making a blunder of last week's video. Fred did not murder me. I guess that's what you call true love. So, as Quite mentioned, we are having some cha kway teow for the week. And cha kway teow, despite being a Hokkien term, is actually of Teochew origin. And if I'm not wrong, it originates from Chaozhou in Guangdong province in China. And cha kway teow is pretty well known in Malaysia and Singapore, with the more prominent version in Malaysia being the Penang cha kway teow. We are going to three spots today, two of which are pretty popular in Klang Valley. And we are going to the first spot which is considered a legendary spot. And people who eat chao kway teow in Klang Valley will most likely know it's called Robert's chao kway teow. And we are heading to the original store located at Damansara Kim at this restaurant called Restaurant Golden Kim Wa. And it's manned by the man Robert himself. There is this uncle behind me, this man. In the red cap is the real Uncle Robert. It is such a privilege to watch him cook. To be honest, I've been to this particular spot before, but I rarely had a uh, chocolate made by Uncle Robert. I think maybe a couple of times because sometimes his disciple fries it. And so today we are really lucky to have him dishing out this dish for us. You can see it starts off by putting in the fresh prawns, followed by I think some pork lard, and then the noodles go in along with the soy sauce and the dark soy sauce, the chili paste. And then I think it ends with the bean sprouts along with that uh, Chinese preserved sausage, the lap chong. It goes in and then whips it up and you can just smell the smoky aroma that wok hay as we were filming it. My god, it makes me really hungry. I've not had breakfast yet. So let's quickly make all this now. Okay. Okay. Just in time, piping hot. Okay, looking at this chocolate, I think it's quite decently presented. Uh, the pork lard seems to be just sprinkled on top. I don't think he fried it with the kway teow, so it looks a little bit dry. But anyway, the key point is we got to smell it to see if there's wok hay. Mmm. More really fragrant. Anyway, let us just try this out. And this, you can see, is actually the Penang chao kway teow. Uh, you can see the hallmark of the shives, the prawns, and all the rest of the ingredients, the pork lard on top. And this is a Chinese sausage. Let's grab a hearty bite. Ooh. Oh, look at the steam. I didn't even notice the steam. Mm. Spicy. Mm. Pretty spicy. Moderately mild. Okay. After you get past the spiciness, you do get a bit of that uh, savory saltiness from the soy sauce. Let me just take another bite. It definitely has wok hay, la, but the smokiness that wok hay is not overly obvious. Ingredients look to be pretty fresh. I could taste uh, the bean sprouts are crunchy, the prawns are pretty okay, they're bouncy. I quite like the lap chong. I think the lap chong is a better quality one. It is sweet and then you've got that saltiness after that sweetness from the Chinese preserved sausage. What about pork lard though? It is a weird thing. Uh, pork lard on its own is quite fragrant and it's got that nice saltiness but because it is pre-fried, so it doesn't sort of melt into the dish. And it's, it's not like a standalone thing. Also not the most fragrant, explosive pork lard that I've had. La. But it's okay. Overall, I think it's lacking a little bit of excitement. La. And, and it's quite spicy. I think the spiciness sort of overpowers the rest of the flavors quite a bit. Anyway, we're going to finish this up. And then uh, we'll head for a quick plating time for Robert Sakwidel before we head to the next spot. Okay guys, done with Uncle Robert's Sakwetel. So what do I think of this dish? Let me put it this way. First of all, the ingredients are fresh. The ingredients are good. They are of a slightly better quality. The noodles are fried pretty well. They maintain that al dente, bouncy and slight chewiness. Flavor balance. Personally, I think it's a little bit off balance. I think mainly due to the spiciness. This is pretty spicy. And the spiciness tends to overpower quite a bit of that savory saltiness. It's a bit difficult for the savory saltiness to come through. And the wok hay although it's there but it does dissipate pretty quickly. 
So at the moment it cools off a little bit, you have lost that walk here. I also noticed that this store doesn't have hum, which is blood cockle. And I think a lot of uh, Chagodel foodies might not like not having blood cockles in their Chagodel. For me personally, it's fine whether you have or you do not have. Although I saw Uncle Robert frying up the pork lard and the lap chong, but as I tasted it, it felt like it was not really fried. I don't know if he topped up additional pork lard for us on our plate, but those are probably not fried. You know, you lack that little bit of that blend into the dish and the pork lard ends up not being that fragrant. But all in all, it's still a really decent plate of Takoya. Like honestly, just that for the popularity it's getting, you might be a tad disappointed lah. So I would say you get to set your expectations right. And with that said, Robert's Penang Chagodel scores an honourable mention on the gourmet plate, which means it is a decent plate of Chagodel. If you are nearby in the neighbourhood, I think you can give it a try. With this spot done, let us move on to the next spot, which is also a pretty popular Chagodel spot. It's called Frankie's Chagodel, located at restaurant 8888 in Damansara Padana. Okay guys, we have arrived at restaurant 8888. The main with Gogurt is Frankie. The special thing for Frankie's Chow Kway Teow is you can choose with duck egg or chicken egg. For me, I will pick the duck egg because it tastes more creamier. Now actually it's right before the lunch hour. So let's quickly order one. Uncle, uh, The Kway Teow is here. Mmm, smell good and also hot. It's very hot, the bottom side. You can see here the Kway Teow is more thinner than what we had just now. And oh, you see the steam? Ooh. Mm. Moderate spicy and moderate smokiness is over a bit salty for me because the soy sauce taste is very present. As you progress mouth after mouth, it tastes more one layer and one dimension and it's sort of like cover the rest of the flavour. The Kway Teow texture is a bit soft but still remains some chewy. So not sure whether it's Franky a bit ganjang because we're framing or what? Mm, the prawn is fresh and guys you have to pick the dark egg if you can because the dark egg makes the Chao Kway Teow more creamer and more egginess. And I found a cooker here. <laughs> mm. It still have the natural cooker taste, but I couldn't find the pop lock. Maybe because it's too small. I think so. The lap chong tastes good, but it's a sweeter type compared with Robert Chao Kway But it still feels like detached with the Chao Kway And the bean sprout here looks over fried, but it still tastes crunchy. Let's quickly finish this and we will do the plating time before we move to the next spot. Maybe I will share with Wei Lun since he is very busy filming. So, Frankie Chao Kway Teow is a decent neighborhood Chao Kway Teow. The ingredients are fresh, the noodle cook well, but for me, it's a bit over salty. The soy sauce flavour is lack of umami, lacks of excitement. So it's like a one dimension as you progress mouth after mouth. Mm. I gotta say though, that dark egg from Frankie is what really makes him stand out. Mm. Because it provides you that creaminess and the velvety texture on your noodles. It really makes a difference. If any Chakwetel store offers dark egg, right, switch the chicken egg for the dark egg. And with that being said, Frankie Chak Kway Teow scores an honourable mention on the gourmet plate, which means it is some pretty decent Chak Kway Teow. I think if you are around the neighbourhood, definitely drop by to try him out. Lah. Okay, on to the final spot. For those who follow us since the beginning, I think you know which store is it. Yeah, because we have featured them before. Mm -hmm. A hint, they are located in Kapong at Lim Sisters Kopi Teow. So let's go! go! Guys, right behind me, that is the inside Chao Kway Teow. We are finally at our favourite spot, Lin Sisters Coffee Tiam. And just watching you try the Kway Teow, it reminds me of how it was when we filled in for the first time. It was about, I think, a year or slightly more than a year ago. Still the same movements, 
the same tossing techniques, that flame and that aroma as we were walking outside into the coffee diam. My goodness, that aroma is heavenly. I miss this place so much. Alright, we're gonna quickly place our orders now because now it's like heat lunch time and we want to savor that delicious goodness before they sell out. Once again, very sorry about the awkward seating position. Table is not large enough, uh, we didn't get a wide enough lens, but it is here. And that fragrance. <sighs> fragrance is good, this is proper fragrance. I'm gonna just quickly dive in and take a bite. I know it doesn't look like Penang Sakodel, and it isn't, but let's try it first. Oh, the steam! Mm. Yeah. Oh, wow, hey, this is proper. That smoky aroma, mm, spicy, savory umami, and you could taste that soy sauce. There's a little bit of this, like, nearly bittersweet undertone. This is proper, proper wok okay. The wok is so present, it's right there, like, ready to attack you, taking you head on. By the way, for those who don't know, basically how you get wok hay is a chemical reaction. It's called, I think, Mylar reaction, uh, if I'm pronouncing it correctly. Basically, you need a cast iron wok, and the wok has to be well seasoned with all that oil and pork lard, and you need extreme high heat. So you toss the ingredients within the wok, and the amino acids and the sugars within the food will break down, and you will start to caramelize the surface of the food. And that flavor and all that smokiness that gets ingrained into the surface of the food, that is called wok hay. And which is why I think when you look at Kinsai, the way he fries it and the way that this extreme heat, I think that is what gives this dish a very strong amount of wok hay. Mm. Noodles, some chewiness, but I did notice it's a little bit softer, but it's still decently fried. Ingredients are fresh. Plants are not the largest, but ingredients are definitely fresh. And guys, this thing, this pork lard, is the proof that size does not matter. These guys are like tiny little atomic bombs just waiting for the right moment to explode. The moment you put it in your mouth, <laughs> best chiao zha I've had. It's insanely umami. All that hockey fattiness, that crazy fragrance, it's all encapsulated in these tiny little guys. Crazy flavorful. The more you get in your bite, it's good. Okay, finally my turn. Okay. <laughs> Alright guys, play nine. So what do I think of Pin Zai Chagwedeo? I'm just gonna go straight out again and say that um, it is still the best Chagwedeo we have tried. La. The key point is the walking. I think for every chocolate gel, you need to have a really strong presence of wok hay. Ginza is really proper wok hay. Aside from wok hay, you've got to get that harmonious balance in flavors. And Ginza has this very unique bitter sweetness that lies behind that salty savoriness of the soy sauce. And it gives it that multi-layering flavor. So as it cools off and your wok hay reduces a bit, the flavors start to present themselves. And it sort of drags you into this vortex of mouth after mouth of continuous eating and you're like, Holy cow, this is a great chow Yes, ultimately it's a yeah. flavor balance. Yeah, it's, mm. for us it's always about flavor balance. The ingredients, I would argue it's a little bit scarce la, compared to most of the chow stores that we have seen. It could have been better, but honestly for the flavors, I'll just come. And with that being said, Jin Zai continues to retain his half a plate status on the gourmet plate. Which means it is some high quality culinary right there. So I think if you like to eat chow kway give Kim Zai a try. Arguably, it's not exactly Penang chow kway but actually the flavors are really similar. So just come and try. Alright, so that's it for our food vlog for the week. Hope you enjoyed this food episode. If you enjoyed, do consider giving us a thumbs up. If you have yet to subscribe, do consider subscribing and hit that notification bell button. Till we eat again next time. Bye-bye.